On World News Tonight, a closer look at putting American ingenuity to work in the fight against terrorism. The new technology to give the U.S. an edge. Some amazing inventions to aid the fight against terrorism. After September 11th, government officials asked for suggestions about new products, new innovations, any ideas people had that might combat new threats. Well, they got them and will spend two billion dollars on new technology next year. But they can't buy everything. Here's ABC's Claire Shipman and some of the more promising ideas that are out there. After September 11th, Washington put out a call for help from anyone, from scientists to corporate leaders. They got more than 12,000 proposals. They cast a very wide net. It's a little bit like trying to boil the ocean. Jeff David, who helps run the government's clearinghouse for anti-terrorism technology, personally looked at 9,000 proposals. You had to look at all those to find those ideas that really were exceptional. This made the cut, a badge to measure victims' exposure in a radiological attack. The government can only fund 60 proposals and admits it had to reject a lot of good ideas. But Jeff David argues the most critical tools are getting to those who need them. You know, the highest priority projects are getting funded. Claire Shipman, ABC News, Washington. Experts now believe terrorists are twice as likely to set off an RDD, a radiation dispersal device or dirty bomb. Over in America, scientists at the Argonne Nuclear Laboratories are working on countermeasures. Now, since Western governments think it's increasingly likely that terrorists may try to detonate such a device, either in the US or in Europe, and this is the personal dosimeter, which also shows any exposure to radiation. As a precaution, similar devices have already been issued to ambulance trusts in Britain. Well, you know, this is one of our low-tech solutions. This has no moving parts, no on-off switch, no battery. You'd carry this like you would your driver's license or an ID card. In situations where there's high levels of radiation, this central rectangle would darken and turn shades of blue. The blue squares on here can be used as a reference to estimate what the radiation levels are. The deeper the color, the more radiation there is. It allows him, in a sense, to see the invisible threat of radiation. If we're in a shopping mall and a bomb goes off, if you are injured, you know it. It's obvious. You're bleeding, you have shrapnel. If it's a radiation dispersal device that goes off in a mall, you may have received a lethal dose, but you don't know. You have no idea what you've been exposed to unless you're properly prepared in advance. And the technologies that we have developed and we're showing you today will help reduce the panic, increase the peace of mind, and help with the cleanup. Frank Gardner, BBC News, near Chicago, Illinois. Well, new reports on a bizarre and potentially troubling site at Japan's damaged nuclear power plant. International nuclear experts believe melted fuel is causing a small, uncontrolled chain reaction there, sending out a burst of heat, radiation. Dominic Di Natale is streaming live to us from Osaka, Japan. Dominic? Meg, it's what's known as a localized criticality in the nuclear power business, and uh, it's down to the fact of a, a, partial, a partial reaction going on there. The uh, biggest concern uh, for the workers there is the fact they're not being issued with enough what are called dosimeters. These are personalized or handheld devices which can tell them just how much radiation uh, is around them and whether they're in danger levels. Uh, let me give you some examples of, of what these dosimeters look like. Um, we've been issued with one here. They can either come in sticker form like this, a little yellow sticker with a gauge that the dark it gets tells you how more dangerous it is. Um, you get a wrist version which starts to bleep rather like an alarm clock. It looks like a wristwatch, but it's a black disc on a strap, and that'll start bleeping when things get dangerous. You get a pager version and you get a pen version. It must be very challenging for them if they're not given the equipment and then being sent into the reactors and sent across the plant complex, not knowing just how much danger they're actually in, and it's all in all a terrible, tragic dilemma for the guys there. Certainly is. Oh, Dominic, thank you for the great reporting you've been doing. However disturbing it may be, Dominic Di Natale.